author, attorney, West Virginia Supreme Court Justice, professor, One Man Legal Aid Society, humanitarian, social warrior, and legal icon. These are all words that have been used to describe Frank Cleckley. One man, usually regarded as one of the most brilliant minds and gifted educators, he is one of the most significant authorities of state law and is conceivably the most prominent legal adversary to social injustice to have ever stood on West Virginia soil. But who is Frank Clinton? How did he become one of the greatest lawyers in the history of West Virginia? Frank was born on August 1, 1940 in Huntington, West Virginia. As the youngest of 11 children, his childhood ambition was to play football as a professional athlete. In pursuing this dream, he attended Anderson College in Indiana, where he began to see greener pastures and a slightly different career option, that in the field of law. Shortly after graduating from Anderson College, he chose to enroll in the Indiana University School of Law, where he could begin achieving his lifelong ambition to make a difference for others. Upon graduation, Frank found himself in the United States Navy as a member of the Navy JAG Corps during the period of the Vietnam War, where he became the most requested lawyer by criminal defendants. Afterwards, Frank obtained his LLM from the Harvard Law School, spent time abroad at Exeter University in England, and returned to West Virginia, where he met Paul Selby, then dean of the West Virginia University College of Law. From that point forward, legal professionals throughout the state of West Virginia began to take notice. Uh. He came back to West Virginia and, and, of course, immediately established his name as a, as a brilliant trial lawyer, defending people and, and pursuing civil rights all over the state. And, and in 1976, he ran for attorney general in the state because he thought the person in that office uh, could accomplish a lot more than historically had been done as, uh, uh, as attorneys general. And uh, I, I think he just bowled people over with his energy and the fact that he could run a statewide campaign actually while he was visiting at, at Syracuse uh, Law School and uh, just uh, uh, won a lot of people over and commanded a great amount of respect around the state because of what he was trying to accomplish for the citizens of West Virginia. And that's, that's never stopped. And of course, his terms on the Supreme Court was uh, another example of his commitment to the state. He historically has been a, a, a driving force, um, not because he's tried to dominate discussion or anything of that nature, it's just that when Frank spoke, people listened. Uh, there was an enormous amount of respect for uh, Frank's opinion on just about anything, and uh, it just carried a, an enormous amount of weight. If um, he said that a particular uh, applicant for a job is somebody he had observed in, in, in working with him uh, and that he was an exceptional lawyer, that was enough to convince the faculty. And if he said um, that a particular person was qualified for tenure, in his opinion, that carried a, a whole lot of weight. It's just that it, 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 it was not um, so much that he exercised power a lot, he didn't. Um, what he did it was he just maintained an incredible amount of uh, influence and respect among his colleagues. Throughout his distinguished career, Frank has written handbooks on criminal procedure and evidence, which have been lauded as Bibles for West Virginia judges and trial lawyers. He has served on the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals, he has served in many capacities within the NAACP, and has become known as a champion of the destitute and weary. Frank retired from WVU in March of 2013 after 44 years of dedicated service. Shortly thereafter, Frank was approached to discuss a proposed fellowship in his name for the West Virginia Innocence Project as a means of recognizing his commitment to fighting injustice and the difference he has made in the lives of many West Virginians. I mean, he was the people's lawyer in this state for decades. He was the person that uh, someone with a civil rights complaint or with a uh, critical criminal case who could not afford a lawyer. Uh, he was the go-to person in controversial cases and, uh, and was known far and wide for his willingness to work for people of, of little or no means. And, and he did it in every corner of the state. If you go to McDowell County, 
they ask you there, how's Mr. Cluckley doing? Uh, you go to Logan County, they ask the same questions. In McDowell County, the judge there said when Frank came to town, uh, the, the courtroom was full. And at the same time, he's been over in the Eastern Panhandle, and he's been in the Northern Panhandle. Um, he's just known throughout the state. And, and he accomplished a lot as a lawyer in terms of promoting civil rights and, and ensuring uh, equal justice. There could be no more appropriate homage to Frank than to uh, name a, an undertaking and a project that is devoted to and, and dedicated to um, pursuing justice and, and undoing injustice. And we took that to Frank and I think he was delighted to, uh, with the idea and, and to associate his name with the Innocence Project. And uh, I, I, I do think that it will enhance the um, desirability of, of, the, of the fellowship and, uh, and thus promote the, the quality of the project as it moves forward. And uh, his, his support for that undertake, undertaking has been, has been critical, I think. The West Virginia Innocence Project was created during the summer of 2012 under the direction of Valina Beatty and has already made strong headway into combating injustice and reforming the criminal justice system here in West Virginia. The Innocence Project is a national organization that gives a voice to individuals who are wrongfully convicted. Um, there is a large network across the country. I was originally started in New York. Um, West Virginia University started a project this year um, in an effort to help citizens, residents of West Virginia. And we handled um, individuals who alleged uh, that they were innocent and they are currently serving a prison sentence. Um, most of our work went into that. Uh, for, there's a lot of investigative work that goes along with that. Um, we also do public policy work, and I personally did a lot of that uh, over the past year, um, specifically dealing with eyewitness identification procedures. Uh, we made several trips to Charleston, and uh, we spoke with several legislators, and ultimately we got a statute amended, and that's a success that we're highly proud of. While representing the poor, the forgotten, the helpless, and the wrongfully convicted, the Innocence Project provides an avenue for exoneration through DNA evidence, biological testing, and statutory reform. As part of the Innocence Project at West Virginia University, uh, we give a voice, we try to give a voice to citizens of West Virginia, residents of West Virginia who are currently incarcerated. Um, in our project, we were able to have direct client contact almost daily. We received applications from potential clients, inmates, who are incarcerated and they believe they have an innocence claim. We would go through each application individually, see if the case had merit. If so, we then investigated, contacted past attorneys, present attorneys if they were still around. Um, in several cases, we called the courthouse and spoke directly to um, the county clerk to look for evidence. On several occasions we actually made trips to courthouses and examined evidence to see if it was still there and if it was viable. Uh, most of what I have done is a um, combination of investigating cases um, to see if there are any wrongfully convicted prisoners that uh, could have a valid claim for release. Um, we did um, have one client um, who came to us. Um, he wasn't currently an inmate. Um, he was convicted uh, many years ago of a crime for which he didn't commit, and he was able to prove that and get his record expunged. Um, but unfortunately, he was uh, still required to be on the sex offender registry. My partner and myself uh, worked with him and the state police and successfully got his name off of the sex offender registry since he did prove that he did not in fact commit the crime that he was convicted of. Through the continued success of the Innocence Project, West Virginia has become one of 46 states to provide recourse and exoneration to citizens and families suffering from wrongful conviction. On behalf of the West Virginia University College of Law and Innocence Project, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your contribution.